Has winter kicked in on that driveway project? What are you gonna do about it? Have a cozy cup of tea and freeze your nuts off? What about taking decisive action? Yeah, we're coming out swinging, come on. When you know you're in a losing battle, but you're just not gonna back down, nothing says defiance like windmilling. And way back, around the time of the last episode, before I decided to windmill into winter, the dew-soaked autumn mornings signaled the drop in temperatures. I made a vain attempt to stabilise the van with a small heater. But winter threatened like a steamroller, leaving me with a tricky decision. Continue with the fun modifications or get as much workaday prep and paint done as possible before it becomes impossible. The moody weather made it obvious my outdoor spray window was closing. And if this project is going to keep any kind of momentum, I'll probably need a backup plan. But let's loop back to that. So, how do you like the Alpine windows? I thought I'd be okay with the roof ribs cutting through them, but the loss potential is obvious, right? They'll have to get cut and modified. The priority is to try and primer the exterior of the van first though. It can't survive another winter with rust gnawing away at all the little scratches and chips. And something was niggling at me. All of the cutting, welding and grinding involved in getting those windows into the roof, which, by the way, you should check out in the previous episode, meant a ton of filings and swarf had sprayed all over the body. This is horrible stuff. It's still hot when it lands, so it digs into paint, then sits there as it rusts, burrowing in deeper. Cleaning it off turned out to be a real testament to epoxy primer. There wasn't time to be all kid gloves with the fresh paint. The rusty filings needed to be a speed bump and not a full-blown job in themselves. So with nothing more than a screwdriver to break up the sections of filings so thick that they were turning solid, an abrasive pad and the pressure washer, I went at the paintwork without mercy. Should have done this from the get-go. Start from the top and work down, I mean. I was testing the resilience of the primer though. I wasn't sure whether I was gonna rub through it, so I'll package this up as an experiment and pretend I meant it. Now watch as the water runs down the windscreen. It's milky because I've gone hard enough with the abrasive pad to take the top off the paint. I tell you, the more I work with epoxy primer, the better I understand how to apply it and what its virtues are. It'll be a huge relief if I can get at least one full coat on the whole van body.
Looping back to plan B, obviously the ideal here is to have a roof over the van where repairs can continue without the hassle of rain stopping play. So in return for helping to clear a pal's chock full unit and some beginner welding lessons, the van gets a lodging. Just long enough to have the repairs and mods done in time for an early spring spray job. Well, you know what that means. I've got to piece the front end back together for a move. Why aren't you spraying the bonnet, Georges? Because this bonnet needs work, that's why. Don't ask silly questions. Anyway, before I was so rudely interrupted, I was going to tell you how easy it is to put a bonnet back on single-handed. Something satisfying about washing a vehicle with a scotch pad, there's no such thing as a stubborn stain. This is also prepped for the first coat of primer though. Yeah, I'll still key the bodywork with a light sand down, but I'll likely use less paper for it not getting clogged up with everything I'm taking off the body now. I gotta tell you, this worked wonders for the energy levels too, being able to see the van clearly and do a fresh stock take on the work needed which isn't as much as it had started to seem, made a massive difference. So with the newfound energy, I thought, fuck it. I'll go for the prep of the front wings and have faith that there'll be another warmish day to hit them with epoxy. I'd never guessed such a small pair of wings needed such a large amount of work. All right, prepare yourself. You're gonna need your blankie and probably froggy because you'll never look at stone chips the same again. Witness the iceberg-like nature of even the smallest nick in paintwork. 
the bit above the surface is more often than not just the tip of a titanic busting bit of rust forming under the paint. Scary. Feathering back paint around bare metal spots like I've done is not nearly the end of the story. These patches will still show up through even multiple layers of paint if at least one of those layers isn't flatted back to even the surface. Usually this is done by spraying two or three coats of high build primer in quick succession, then flatting back until a smooth surface is achieved. It might be extravagant, but I'm toying with the idea of just flatting back three layers of epoxy. I tested that idea on the passenger side A pillar and it worked well, the only niggle being the primer being left thin in certain places afterward. Anyway, that's not for today. Thank you. 
First thing in the morning. It's cold and dewy, but it's lovely and quiet. And I'm putting out a temperature o meter. I'm gonna keep an eye on this. It's barely, it's barely nine degrees. And we need it to be 10 minimum. And ideally twice that actually, if we're gonna spray, but we'll take what we can get. And I'm gonna keep an eye on this throughout the day. Hopefully by the afternoon, we get a run of you know, 12, 14, 16 degrees, a couple of hours that once we've everything prepped, we can just hit everything with a first coat of epoxy primer. I'll be watching. This is for every manual that ever said, just undo the fasteners and remove the door card. Yeah, might have been a different story if you actually consulted the manual. Flip. Well, maybe I'm going upwards, am I? Oh, okay. Upwards and out. I got it. Dope. I'm lucky I didn't break something here. You broke that, you dickhead. Call yourself a dickhead. applying common sense here and I'm going to try and push this piece of glass out of the door. It's quite a scary thing to do. Work. It's actually teasing out from the inside. Come on. go not so bad that was easy okay now it's time to take off the door
Well, we hit 22 at one stage, but we're down to just under 13, which uh, it isn't really enough, but it's gonna have to do because I can't leave it bare now, so I'm off to spray it. Okay, ignoring for a second that I made a mountain out of the door card removal. These are the simplest doors I've ever seen. The window regulator assembly is held by four bolts and just slides out. The window runner is just screwed into the door frame. The door handle is held in place by just one bolt and the side mirror not much more than that. 
Then all that's left is the check strap and striker mechanism, just another couple of bolts each. You could strip one of these doors completely in less than 10 minutes. I dropped the door while repositioning it. The leading edge along the bottom got bent and when I eased it back, two kinks appeared. And I don't mean Ray and Dave Davies. It's a real pisser because otherwise it was straight. All it means is more work, but it's one of those stupid disappointments that can knock you back. Maybe even stall a job if you're not careful. I'm always happy to blaze a trail, you know, really put my own projects in the line of fire and take a hit for the team. Well, I've done it again. And you're welcome. Turns out masking tape and paper will not provide a weatherproof barrier on a doorless, exposed sprinter van. Who'd have guessed it? I suppose putting the door back on might be a good idea. feel like I put a bit too much time into these lamps. The work didn't pay off because much of the oxidation is actually on the inside of the lenses. Plus, the nearside lamp has deteriorated badly at the bottom. Something I didn't notice until most of the work was done. It would have been a less bitter pill to swallow if there was a more pronounced difference in the before and after shots. Anyway, I guess there'll be a new set of lamps before this project's over. <laughs> You're joking, right? No way I'm putting old rusty fasteners back into my nice fresh paint. This is my favourite, replacing mild steel guff with nice shiny stainless. It's not for all applications, obviously, but for panel fastening like this, perfect.
The front bumper is held up behind its trailing edges by a hanger on each side, in turn locked in place by some push fit buttons. I'm not going to fit those just yet, all this has to come back off for final paint, but the friction fit of the hangers will be enough for the short run to the unit. You noticed, right? I know you noticed. The rust starting on a few of the front panel edges. It's partially because I didn't prep the bare metal well enough. And by that I mean I should have ground the rust in some pitting out with something harder than the knotted wheel on the grinder. And it's partly because I didn't get enough primer on those panels. I've learned that if you haven't achieved a high gloss finish with an application of epoxy primer, you haven't gotten enough of it onto the metal. Now, I took the dashboard apart on this, I stripped the whole interior in fact, and I did it so long ago, I don't really remember why I did it. I think mainly because, well, there's lots of cracked vents all the way across the dash, that seems to be a thing with this model, but also because the instrument cluster somehow has a big crack down the centre of it. Now, the problem is, I got a new one and I put it in, and then the van wouldn't start, it gave me an error. So I'm hoping if I just swap this back out, put that in there like that, pull this away, we can start the van. Little bit of battery, just a pinch of the steering wheel. Oh, come on splines. Okay, contact. Oh, nothing. What was that about? Why? Come on, baby. Okay, other issues. I went straight to assuming the engine had seized sometime over the long layup. I mean, despite never having had a single engine seized on me, ever. But you know, it's all the rage in the interweb these days. Anyway, I called the old V8 in to give the Sprinter a little bit of gentle persuasion. Just a little rock back and forth. Turns out, it's a dodgy starter motor. Well, dodgy or sticky, either way, dodgy. Okay, contact. Mm. Nasty. The OM611 engine in this van is neither the least nor the most refined engine ever, 
but it should sound a lot better than this. Well, it took a few minutes. It's running nice and smoothly now, though. It's got a great engine, 75,000 miles, which is why I'd bother putting this effort into it. I'm gonna leave it running for a little while longer and assess a few other things. I know straight off the brakes are toast, but we've gotta move it and that's what's gonna happen. That's what's going to happen between now and the next episode. A door, its frame, two wings and a slam panel. How could it have been this much work? Well, I suppose the silver lining is that this is the complicated detailed bit and the rest of the van won't feel nearly as onerous now that I know my way around it. At least that's what I'm telling myself. My work, this work, and all of my videos is almost exclusively funded by patrons. So I'd like to thank JC McClinko, Roland Hillgarth, Battles, Foster Christensen, James Gormley, Alexander, Josh Stacey, Patricia Corellis, Ivan Scowen, Andy, Vitamins, Chris Snow, Matthew Anderson, Brian Spencer, Chris Cronin, Michael Brown, Patrick Noble, Gary Eaves, Rich Williams and David Clark and all of my patrons past and present for keeping me going. If you'd like to help out, check out the details in the description. There's a link to my website where you'll find everything you'll need. Until next time, stay warm, stay stuck in, which is the same thing. And until then, good luck. Windmilling. <laughs>